Welcome to your 2018 Lunar Report. I'm Tammy Taylor, your manifestation muse. And yes, this is a report for the emotional moon sign because this is all about taking charge of our emotions. It is about being very clear about what our intuitive guidance is saying because by knowing what energies are available to support our wants, desires, and our needs, we're able to more effectively Effectively engage in our lives. So this isn't about control. It's not about being able to dictate or to predict the outcome. This is about knowing scientifically, astrologically, cyclically, based on universal and ancient truths of the cosmos, what patterns are available and are working for us and on our behalf. We know them here on the Great Mother Speaks channel as the lunar energies of Great Mother, the Holy Spirit, that still small voice that operates through the lunar cycles. It is that moon that is constantly revolving around the earth, the ego child, the ego body. We are the children, aren't we? And as children of the great mother, father, God, especially during the holidays, which we've just come through, we're often asked as children, what do you want? And just generally in life as a child, you can recall being asked every time you saw someone new or a parent introduced you to someone or a teacher or a new class, what do you want to be? Remember that? Well, Great Mother, Father, God never stop asking us that because as souls, we are never done evolving. We are never done wanting. We are never done experiencing. And so every solar cycle, every lunar cycle ask us that same question. And so as children of the Great Mother, Father, God, we are divine. We are seen as divine. We are not seen as weak. We are not seen as victims. That is an illusion that we have accepted. And so that is the part of the weak ego when we talk about the weak, unhealthy ego that has taken on that illusion as an identity. There are three concepts that are very important for viewers to the Great Mother Speaks YouTube channel. The first one is that we are divine children of the Great Mother Father God, which means we are dearly loved. You can see here the logo says you are dearly loved. What does that mean? The second principle that we are never judged or condemned. Does that mean there are no consequences for our ab actions? Absolutely not. There is karma. There is karma for everything that we do, good or antagonistic to our needs or to the needs of others. We are never judged or condemned. Never. Never. And we don't judge or condemn other people because we know, especially based on what I'm about to share with you about the first quarter of this year, we never have enough information to adequately judge anyone. These are general readings. Can you imagine when they get more specific? So we don't even go there. And the third principle is that because we are dearly loved and are never judged and condemned, we're never alone. Regardless of that illusion that the unhealthy ego has, we are never alone. We have countless guides, angels, and ancestors assisting us on a daily basis, on a minute basis, on an eternal basis. Are you kidding me? So, Great Mother, Father, God, even through the sun and the moon, ask us every day, all day, what do you want? In the moment of question, of uncertainty, what do you you want in the moment of confusion of despair what do you want we have the power to assert that but fear of this power based on the unhealthy ego that says i'm constantly being judged and condemned i am not loved i am alone is afraid to embrace that power but here on the great mother speaks channel you know that that's where these readings come from that's where the information comes from it comes from a place of knowing that we are in constant evolution we are constantly growing up and we're constantly being asked with love and adoration what do you want so that is how we interpret and perceive the energies within us and around us because after all astrology is the science of spirit come into form and as such 
We are I am spirits in the physical form. I am Aries. That is the statement of Aries. We must know who we are and be as we are before we can have. That's the statement of Taurus. We must have what we want before we can think, which is the Gemini statement. We must be able to think clearly before we can feel clearly, which is the Cancer energy. We must feel clearly before we can will. I will, which is the Leo energy. I will is necessary before I analyze, which is the Virgo energy. Before we can analyze, we have to will ourselves to be interested in anything to analyze. Before we can analyze anything, before I balance, I must Analyze, because after all, what am I balancing? That is the Libra energy. I balance. I must balance before I can desire. Before we can desire anything, we have to balance within ourselves clarity to assert a desire. The Scorpio energy. I desire is necessary before I see because I won't know what I'm looking at. I won't have focus. I must desire Scorpio before I see the Sagittarius statement. I must see clearly before I can use something. The Capricorn energy before I can know something, I must use something. I know energy of Aquarius for me to know something, I must be clear about its use, about its purpose, about what it is. The Aquarius energy, I know. And I must know something before I can believe it. The Pisces energy, I know before I believe. And I believe Pisces energy before I am. What did we believe before we came into form? Of course, Pisces energy is 12th house, unconscious, isolation energy. We are away from everything. We are in meditation. We are in retreat. We are in a place of clarity, of believing in something. And so when we are disincarnate, we are in spiritual form. There is a belief crystallizing around matter, which creates the physical form of the Aries body. That passion, that fire come into form through Aries. This is the way Great Mother has channeled to me the relationship between the Vedic and the Western astrology as they are used on her channel to do readings with the Great Mother Speaks deck. This deck is going to be used to give you a report and the Vedic is the soul energy. It is the soul energy of being in the full moon. Just that being. What do you want to be? And as a child, we interpreted that as what do I most enjoy? What do I have the most fun at? What am I being? And it would be pretend, wouldn't it? Oh, when I pretend to be a fireman, when I pretend to be a teacher, when I pretend to be a farmer, when I pretend, when I pretend, what am I being? And we would translate that into an occupation, the doing, which is the actual energy of the new moon and the actual energy of the ego. And so the ego action that is required to follow through with the desire of beingness in this physical realm, what we want to be, we then create or we pretend an outer garment, which is exactly what the soul believed in Pisces to create the I am. So the Vedic is a very intuitive, soulful, deep energy of soul experience. So that is where we're drawing the first part of our astrological 
transit information from. And then we look at the Western in relationship to that in terms of the ego reaction to what the soul is experiencing. What is it doing? What is it feeling? What is it thinking? Okay, so we will get into that a little bit more deeply. But before we do, remember that each lunar cycle from the Cancer full moon January 1st to the March equinox in Aries Taurus moon, we will get clarity, balance and confirmation about what phases are most supportive for experiencing this ego soul alignment. Okay. And so again, as children, we really didn't know what we wanted, did we? We, 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 we did, but the translation, it gets lost in translation. And the more we understand the language of signs and symbols, the closer we get to exactly fulfilling what it is our intuition our sensitivity is actually saying to ourselves and as these areas within us and particularly speaking to sensitives intuitives and empaths as we generally grow in these areas and within ourselves and as we mature by integrating these energies in our lives, we become more attuned to Great Mother, Holy Spirit, Yin energy, that still small voice of our highest good, which enriches our lives. Enjoy your report and go to greatmotherspeaks.info to get yours for this year. Well, here is your 2018 first quarter lunar report. What keeps coming up are threes. There are three eclipses that will come into a completed thought form for us in this first quarter, starting from the total solar eclipse of August 21st, 2017, there are three major planetary transits in Uranus, Jupiter, and Saturn, and Great Mother guided me to use the three-card spread of clarity, balance, and confirmation. Clarity telling us how we are approaching the new year. The balance is how we are transforming ourselves and our situation through the clarity that we've received. And confirmation is the integration of what has occurred, what has happened, and our understanding moving forward, which reflects the energies of the lunar cycle. For you, the first quarter, we're beginning with the month of January. That card that came up for you is the Ankh, opens up the energy for Cancer Moon People. I feel is the energy of the Cancer constellation and the moon sign of the collective unconsciousness opens up January 2018 with a soulful beingness of just being where you are and enjoying the domestic life. So where you are at home, where you are, whatever you consider to be home, where you are at this specific time of the year, the holiday season, domesticity, family, the familiar impulse for you this time of year is so powerful because this is your full moon. The Cancer full moon is on the 1st of January. It opens up the year. It is in Gemini Cancer, your 12th and 1st houses. Your 12th house, as it relates to the Vedic astrology, of course, with your moon sign of Cancer, that would be Pisces and Vedic. And so the Gemini energy of the soul is really, really at home in this place, the 12th house representing isolation, but it's also the place of the unconscious. And so it's a very 
is so full time for you every year. And the emotional response to this is, of course, the cancer and the Western astrology, the ego response, the emotional response is first house energy of this is my identity. This is where I am. This is who I am. And this is a feeling of just being chilled out, you know, and that soul impulse to really have that nature. It may also be a time of feeling a bit nervous. Sometimes when we are not in alignment or we don't embrace our natural affinity or our natural uh, cosmic calculus, as Great Mother likes to call it, it can create some anxiety. And so we look at in the full moon what the sun is reflecting through its light upon her. And That is in Sagittarius Capricorn. For you, Cancer Moon people, this has a lot to do with how you are reflecting what you do with regard to your health. And so if it is creating some feelings of anxiety or anxiousness for you, maybe there are some issues that you're beginning to see or that you know need to be dealt with every time this time of the year comes around as it relates to your work life, as it relates to your health health as it relates to um, just generally your work-life balance. And so that nervousness that you may be feeling is something that uh, you need to address and that you have the cosmic support to do so this time of year. And so if that's a feeling that comes around to you, Great Mother is saying that that's because you are not in alignment with just that chill factor, you know, and just allowing yourself to relax in that because the sun is in Capricorn in the Western. And so that egoic response is to do, 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 right? That Capricorn energy, what's practical? What can I use? How can I use this time off work, for example? And so if you're that kind of cancer, well, then that anxiety can really work against this ankh energy, which we see here is the double yin, single yang. And so there's just one yang. There's just, you know, one active energy here. It's majority that feminine moon energy, which rules your lunar sign. Great mother does rule your lunar sign. And so the law of ego form and manifestation is to align that inspired Shekinah, Yin, Holy Spirit, energy with really how you live your life and what you do, even if it's as simple as this image would indicate, sitting on the beach, being at home, wherever that is for you. It could be in the Pyrenees Mountains, you know, Um, it could be anywhere. Um, You could be surrounded and engulfed in snow, in other words, and that makes you feel nurtured and loved and at home. Great Mother's coming through for you very powerfully at the very beginning of the year, Cancer moon people to encourage you to embrace that the supportive energy that she's emphasizing for you is coming through the nakshatra and of course in the vedic astrology we have many deep variations of lunar energy and on this particular day mikshidra is coming up and the soul experience with this energy is extremely loving emotional creative maternal caregiving confident and an explorative energy. The ego responds to this type of energy and the collective unconsciousness of the Cancer Moon in terms of a feeling of enthusiasm, very convincing communication with within yourself and with others. And so just really wanting to uh, get out there and let people know what you have, maybe selling something, you know, maybe if you have a newsletter, you're one of the people that can really connect to others during this time of the year or a blog or, you know, Christmas cards or holiday wishes or maybe even um, things at work that you're doing creatively. You might be a creative director and this is a time that you're using to really sow some of those seeds. Again, work-life balance is very important. And that's unique for each of us, isn't it? Some people, you know, you may be a Cancer Moon people based on your unique cosmic calculus outside of your moon sign that that really serves you. And so that's where a personal reading would come in for you. But the general collective unconscious for the Cancer Moon is saying that this type of energy can be challenging in terms of the anxiety 
uh, which can uh, flow over into marital challenges as well due to the strength of this energy. So again, we're dealing with the domestic, we're dealing with home, and we hear that a lot about cancer. We hear about the mother um, and the maternal issues as well. But what is being offered here is that you pull back the enthusiasm when you need to in order to stay grounded. So wherever that over-enthusiasm may be causing you not to feel at home and not to feel the support of this Cancer Moon energy, that's encouraged because it's not only going to make you feel a bit anxious and anxiety-ridden, it will create that in your environment. So just chill. Enjoy the chill um, and enjoy the energy to assist you balancing any way that you need to. Now, this year over opened up with a lot of planetary activity that is supporting us. We're focusing on three major ones, and that is Jupiter is in your fourth and fifth house. It has been there since October, and in your fourth house, Cancer Moon people, this is, again, home life, you know, coming into balance. And so that's why this is very much emphasized now until about October of this year, and this is being manifested emotionally for you in terms of uh, the Scorpio energy that's saying, hey, I want to have fun. I desire to really enjoy my life. I, I really want my domestic life to be rewarding. I really want it to be something that is an intimate kind of um way that I can share with others and that I can be really, really sincere. And so that is a real expansive opportunity for you. And it's real benefic- uh, beneficial for you. However, as the full moon has brought out, Uranus has been in your 10th house since, well, seven years ago. And so the work life is has really come to the forefront. There have been a lot of changes there, focusing on uh, synergies around management issues and around being able to uh, manage others or you being managed by others, having to really come to some type of a clarity about how you are leading your employees perhaps in your own business and how you were being led by uh, economic projections or uh, new technologies or uh, new ways of doing things. And so that has uh, created some challenges for you to balance what you're wanting. But that Jupiter energy came in for you Cancer Moon people in these areas of home life and intimacy and what you truly desire to kind of help support boost that uh, lack that you've been experiencing over the last seven years. And so this year should be a boon. And I wouldn't be surprised if this full moon has not been as well. Don't forget Saturn did enter Capricorn right after the December new moon. And so In the Vedic, it was in Scorpio, and so now it's in Sagittarius. That's your sixth house. And so Saturn has really been on a soulful level working with your work life. And so that's really been big for you. And so it's been working with your health, and it's been working with this work-life balance. And it's also been making you very analytical about that. So maybe you've been trying new diets. Maybe you've been trying, um, again, new technologies, new ways to manage your resources in terms of your work and your labor and what your gifts and what you do in the world. It has also been very emotionally challenging in terms of how you are committing your resources, you know, what new responsibilities you've been taking. There's been some, um, you know, real efforts to create a feeling of uh, taking charge by creating new contracts with people, you know, new businesses, new partnerships and that sort of thing so that you can, um, you know, practically apply the things that you have been learning uh, from the Sagittarius um the Saturn transit in Sagittarius and um, now that you're in Capricorn really wanting to move into that because we know that the strongest impulses of any sign Great Mother uh, lets us know that that comes during the final stages of its transit so for example now that Saturn is in Capricorn 
Capricorn, the strongest impulses of Sagittarius were felt right around um, when Jupiter came into Libra Scorpio, just as now Uranus is about to move into Taurus in May. And so we're getting the strongest impulses of Uranus and Aries in its last degrees of Aries. And so you are still, you know, really dealing with those work issues. And so She's emphasizing for you with the new moon on January 16th that there's a balance coming for you. And so um, although the new year opens up with really emphasizing, you know, where the imbalances perhaps are, if you haven't been working with the energies intuitively, Cancer Moon people, then, of course, the energies are always available to support us. And that's what these readings are for, to focus in on that. The 16th, there is a Saturn conjunct to this new moon. And, of course, the new moon is about doing and thinking. It's what we're planning. And for you, that's in the sixth and seventh house. This is Sagittarius Capricorn, which is exactly where the new moon was in December. It was actually a cusp. And so you might want to go back and look at what Great Mother was telling you during the new moon in December for the Cancer moon sign because Saturn now with this is saying that, of course, you know, we're looking you know, at work, you know, in terms of the soul and that sort of thing. But the soul is experiencing work on a soulful level as a teacher or is teaching, training or being trained to do something new. So we know that we have karmic relationships with others, that we have had relationships with souls through lifetimes. And so the soul actually is doing on a soulful level some teaching and training. And um, the ego is um, responding emotionally by thinking that it is learning how to take charge. It is learning how to assort these intuitive unctions that it is having through this Capricorn in your seventh house. And so, again, these contractual relationships and practically applying what the soul knows. There is a great um, supportive energy here with the nakshatra. Purvasada, and this is a very regal chakra, okay? And so that's why we know that this is dealing with very high energy. It's ruled by Venus, and it rewards efforts for taking high risk. And so the risk of actually trusting what the soul is teaching, trusting what the soul is knowing at this particular time is really going to pay off. You have been focusing on work, so this isn't a one-off. You've had seven years of focus in this area. And so, yes, it's coming to fruition. The money has been put into the bank account. And so what Saturn is offering is a transformative opportunity through this Ankh symbol, through this Ankh law of ego form and manifestation by saying that, you know, the engage its energies, you know, engage the Saturnal fatherly teaching uh, energies to devote yourself to fulfilling your inner peace in relationship to work so that um, the boundaries, limitations, lessons and tests that are the hallmarks of Saturn are amplified because it's in its home constellation of Capricorn in your emotional placement of partnerships. And so it, this is your seventh house. And so both your personal and professional contracts, marriage, um, again, we're looking at work-life balance as well because we're looking at the sixth house with your soul energy, the Vedic energy. And issues of codependency again those karmic relationships are we in a karmic relationship that we can now consciously initiate some type of shift in how we have been working with that pattern of relationship for example if you are training you know is there an issue that keeps coming up with someone or some issue at work that okay it's time to put this to bed and it feels so familiar that it's just something that you do and it's like oh boy I wake up in the morning this is what I do and that type of energy again great mother is saying to me to tell you that these underlying anxiety issues is not what she wants for you cancer moon people you know she's really wanting to put a spotlight on it because the restrictions of Saturn are there to support you, dear one, to refine how you want to do work, how you want to do relationship, how you want to do your daily life so that um, how your need to be nurtured and how you need to nurture others is 
brought to that spotlight so you can clearly see even if it's just the time and resources to to do the nurturing for yourself you know to yourself as is reflected in this card you know sometimes we just need the time and resources to do that to feel recharged and to feel balanced again each of us have our own unique cosmic calculus and we'll know what that is for us and so she's saying to get in tune with what that is for you cancer moon people you know like this card shows you know no one knows what we need better than we do and that new moon on the 16th of january with that saturn conjunction which which is reflecting the new moon energies of December. Wow, is giving you a lot of support. On the 31st, we have a total lunar eclipse. This is in your first and second house, Cancer Moon people. And so this is about what you may be overlooking in terms of this energetic support. A total lunar eclipse happens during a full moon. This is a full moon on the 31st and it's offering some confirmation for you with regard to the soul sight. Your soul is squarely focused on what it values most in terms of its identity, its purpose for crystallizing and manifesting in your body. Okay, that's the law of ego form and manifestation. It has a purpose and an intent for manifesting in your body. And this energy of this full moon is saying that there needs to be a volcanic purge to cleanse, to clarify, to heal whatever residual issues that the ego may have emotionally with regard to responding to this intuition that you're feeling during this full moon that the soul you know without these readings and without this clarification we get these these emotional hits and you know uh, these emotional waves that come through us and we're like what is this well this is what it is during this full moon the soul of this unconscious constellation of cancer is asserting why it came here it's ruled by the moon the year 2018 is moving into feminine energies and so it's no surprise um, that the yin sign would be feeling this surge during the lunar eclipse so at this time cancer moon people the soul energy is asserting why it came here and so as you feel that emotionally in the second house of leo which is where the moon is during this time in the western you are responding by saying these are my values this is what i value this is what's most important to me on an ego level you're going to be looking at, you know, what groups and clubs and causes and, um, you know, your teachings, your spiritual beliefs, that that type of thing that sustains you and that guides what you do and what you have and what you consider to be safety and security in your life. OK, how much needs to be in the bank account and how you arrive at that and what you do. OK, the work from the new moon is what we do and what we think to achieve that and so this is going to bring up solar issues great father issues full moon is the sun reflection your seventh and eighth house and so the soul is asserting this identity in the lunar and the sun energy reflecting that is capricorn in the seventh house which is organizing around this the soul is organizing itself around this. It's making commitments. It's, 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 it's asserting a discipline around this. And the ego is responding in the solar light of active energy in the eighth house of Aquarius where it's saying, okay, well, I am asserting on a lunar level what my values are what makes me feel safe and secure so I am being reborn in terms of how I relate to my genius my gifts and my talents how I'm going to share my values with the world see I'm being reborn in this and so that's the reaction is that whoa this emotional intuitive wave is coming through and I'm feeling a certain type of way well 
depending on your own cosmic calculus, is going to be unique to you. But the general wave is that you are reassessing how you're going to share your gifts and talents with the world. The nakshatra that is supporting this is Pusha, and it's ruled by Rahu, which in the Vedic is the North Node. So this is the soul's pull to go toward its life purpose. That's why we know that the soul is asserting why it came here to and through you. It is a very childlike, fun-loving, reliable type of energy, but it can be too nurturing at times. It can be too caring at times. Again, this balance is very important for Cancer Moon people. The lesson here is self-care. So during this full moon, when you're feeling these waves of intuitive guidance, this intuition is how the soul communicates to the ego. The ego communicates to the soul through emotion. When you are feeling this huge burst of energy through these e- these communication channels. The energy of Pusha during this full moon is going to remind you to self-care, self-mother, self-love, self-protect. Go into the self. Go into the yin. This is a double yin, single yang card. It is the law of ego form and manifestation. That is a process, as we see with the third eye, of receiving the accurate information. Because during this time, the information that you're receiving most accurately and adequately is since the solar eclipse of August 21st that everyone was focused on. This is the opposite of a lunar eclipse. This is the same transit that was going on then that is going on now with the moon in Cancer Leo, your first and second house. This is the um, moon transit of the soul asserting why it came here through your constellation in Rahu. And it is now in the North Node in the Western astrology as well. And so this pull toward why it came here. And so this Leo energy which we've had since May of last year, right before the solar eclipse. The solar eclipse is a reset button. It is when the new moon blots out the sun, as we saw. It completely blots it out in a total solar eclipse. And so what that does is it brings the unconscious into conscious light. It makes us see what shadows there are lurking behind. And since the sun was in Leo in both Vedic and the Western, it was the most powerful sun the planet can experience, which was blotted out in our part of the planet by great mother energy of the moon in Cancer. So Cancer is ruled by the moon, great mother energy. And Leo is ruled by the sun, great father energy. This was a galactic event. And so, yes, at this particular time, there will be some very strong energies supporting us in order to begin reconciling these energies. In other words, what have we been doing in terms of working with these shadow issues that have come up for us since that time? The on card would indicate for you, Cancer Moon people, that there has been a need to do some rest. This is um, a third quarter moon card. And so that is when we begin to release, to let go, to forgive. And we are entering into kind of a resting phase as we see with the image kind of just sitting there on the beach again at home. And so... The holiday seasons, the new year maybe brought that into full culmination when you actually finally, ah, if you've been working with the energies of rest and recuperation, kind of, you know, um, moving into that uh, until now up to this full moon. Um, If you haven't been feeling that, well, then there will be another opportunity. There's always opportunities. We live in eternity okay and so don't worry another cycle of energy will come up around and so um 
This is um, the revisiting of this energy here on the 31st, the full moon, and um, the ecliptical energy with the intuitive, sensitives, and empaths who've been working with it is going to close out with the new moon on February 15th. The card for February is Coventina. Coventina is the card of purification, and purification has to do with that heart chakra, the heart chakra is the crossroads between the ego and the soul. It is actually where the lower heart below energies meet the upper heart above energies. And for you, this new moon is in your seventh and eighth houses of Capricorn Aquarius. Capricorn Aquarius is where the sun was during the full moon at the end of January. And so this is a um Reversal, as we had the reversal with the eclipses on the 31st. A lot of supportive energy. The soul is balancing shadows with this energy, okay? And so those shadows that came up during the total solar eclipse, the soul is balancing these from the unconscious. And the self, the um, it's balancing these energies with the self, with, with the lowercase s self, the ego. And the ego is thinking in terms of how to integrate these new values that are coming up for it. Again, remember the values coming up during the total lunar eclipse, asserting, you know, what I believe and how I believe I should be safe and secure. And so now the ego is beginning to assert those things. New moon energy is doing and thinking. It's the planning energy for the next lunar phase. And so this thinking eighth house energy in Aquarius is about really getting into the purification of how am I going to share my gifts and talents and abilities with the world? Because on the soul level, I am intuitively getting the hit to reset the button on how I commit, on how I respond to uh, practical opportunities that come up for me at work or at home in terms of how I run my environment. So how am I going to purify all of this based on the shadow information that has come up for me? So a lot of times when shadow things come up for, for us, those inconvenient truths, those things that we'd rather not acknowledge, those things that we, we would rather others not know, we want to hide from them. And that is only if we do not know we are what? Dearly loved. Divine children of the great mother, father, God, who are never judged or condemned and never alone. But since we know that, we know that we have energy to support us. And what is that? Shravana, the nakshatra that is very supportive in us getting in balance with this type of energy between the ego and the soul, okay? And so perfectly timed because this is for intuitives, empaths, and for highly sensitive people, the closeout of the eclipse on the 21st of August because this is where we... We have Capricorn in the Vedic, which is now the South Node, and Aquarius in the Western, which is now the South Node. And that's the reverse of what was happening during the total solar eclipse, which was the North Node, Leo, was what the sun was in, and Rahu, Cancer was what the sun was in. And so it's closing out that great meeting between great mother, father, God by giving us the kahunas to address issues of abandonment and issues of being smothered or smothering others. So, for example, if part of the balancing act in terms of integrating and purifying the shadow has to do for you, Cancer Moon people, being a little bit too controlling, a little bit too nurturing, a little bit too out of balance with uh, that mothering energy at home and at work, then that means that this energy is going to help you pull back on that. It's going to help you just release that that over intensity of Aquarius in that eighth house, okay? Because that's um, 
not where you want to uh, be in terms of using your good listening skills. That's the positive side of the nurture of the mother, of using your uh, perseverance and your um, um, commitment, okay, um, because you need some energy for yourself. You know, as we're seeing here with Coventina, that heart chakra in the waning balsamic moon. So we're refining, we're revising, we're reevaluating. That's what the um, waning, um, I'm sorry, that's what the waxing uh, moon is. It's all about that. And so when we are waxing towards something, we're gaining clarification if you, on the other hand, are in an abandonment type of imbalance and the shadow is showing up as abandoning yourself, abandoning your own personal needs to be nurtured or the needs of others that you are responsible for to be nurtured, well, then there is a need to um, release that and to embrace the responsibilities, again, on a soul level, on Capricorn, self house, seventh house, those responsibilities. And so this energy is there to complete. Completely and totally support you through, um, you know, the release of um, the old. Now, um, when we're waxing, we are um, using this supportive energy and the heart chakra that crossroads is a back and forth ego soul communication and so in march as that is happening on a day-to-day basis as it opens up on the first with a full moon with clarity you will see in this leo leo moon which is the complete closeout from that leo leo sun uh, during the solar eclipse, this moon is in your 12th house. And so there's a lot of contemplation, a lot of meditation. Maybe you will be isolating a little bit. If not, you're going to be in a very deep, intuitive state of receiving unconscious downloads. Now, this is the waning gibbous moon so the waning gibbous moon is about sharing and thanksgiving and so the soul is sharing with you that this heart opening is allowing it to download to you what these new ways of balancing yourself as a result of facing these shadows and working with the energies of um Coventina has brought up for you now and Sheila Nagig. Sheila Nagig is going to just like that open vulva above the medieval temples of Europe is going to allow you to face these shadows with love. That's the heart. And it's going to allow you with this North Node energy in Leo to emotionally respond to it with detachment. And this is reemphasized by the support from the Nakshatra Maha. It's ruled by K2, which is the South Node in Vedic. And so the soul is pulling back and helping you to release whatever uh, shadows still remain in the 12th house, whatever things still need to die. It's helping you to release that. It's a very dignified Leo energy. It is the most mature Leo energy, as we see with both Leos in the Vedic and in the West. That means they're very close. And it's a naturally gifted energy. You don't have to try hard to download. You don't have to uh, overly meditate. All you have to do is remember, oh, I am experiencing supportive energies to help me get what I need in the moment. In this moment, I really need to know what is my body telling me I need to eat for lunch. I have no idea what to eat for lunch. And you will have it in less than a second. That's all need to be done. From that to I really need to know exactly how to respond in this email. I have 50 million emails today and I haven't even started my work day. I need to know what is the pat response to this. You will have it 
within 10 seconds. This is the energy. This is the support that you're receiving. It is um, whatever you do is going to succeed as long as you tap into it. Whatever you think on, on this March 1st Nakshatra Maha energy, it's amazing. It's it's ready to move forward. It's ready to release that shadow stuff that you've worked with, that you've acknowledged through these lunar and sun exchanges. This full moon is reflected by the sun in Aquarius Pisces. And so Aquarius reflecting on the Leo in the soul energy is saying, hey, you know, I'm really ready to release this stuff to share what I have to share with the world, my gifts, talents, and abilities. And in the Pisces, it emotional response to this is I believe that I can use my intuitive abilities to enjoy my gifts and talents to succeed with what I have to give the world. Now the lesson here is letting go of the lower natured Leo side in order to receive these intuitive messages because the lower energy of ego is I, 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 and you know, I will, I will. And so you, it already knows everything. Okay. But we have to feel cancer. I feel before we will. And so that is what 2018 is all about for you, Cancer Moon people. It is all about feeling, but it's feeling with purpose. It's feeling with direction. And so the ego is ready to move forward with true soul desires in light of the sun energy and believing that um, it, it is defining and refining your situation in a way that will simplify and beautify your experience on this planet. The new moon on the 17th of March is about really doing and thinking in terms of rebirth and awareness. What you know, you know, you know. The soul is resurrecting itself through the ego's new thoughts and openness and uh, open heartedness and aligning with ego soul communication with regard to its new social goals, its work goals, its public image and, and sharing of gifts. And emotionally, the ego has faith in what it knows it can do its abilities, its talents. And so in the eighth house on a soul level, this purification, great mother is saying, is a rebirthing within your lifetime. Many times we think that it, we have to die before we can be or do something else. This is not the case. When we live consciously from an ego soul perspective, we can uh, be reborn within a lifetime. And so this is the opportunity that this energy is bringing to you cancer moon people again this is very powerful um, many people uh, say these things and we have a lot of catchphrases about great mother energy and the yin energy is coming on the planet and this sort of thing great mother's coming through and breaking down what that means for you and what that means is that you have an opportunity to be reborn with this new moon in aquarius pisces March 17th, the soul is rebirthing itself in terms of how it wants to share its gifts and talents through you. And you believe this with this Pisces new moon. You believe that you know what you need to know and that you're learning what you need to learn. You're being provided the resources that you need to be provided to do what you want to do. Particularly, uh, you see what you want to do specifically for you by the fall spring equinox, which is the 20th. So within three days after this, it had become really clear to you with the crescent moon, which is the planting moon in Aries Taurus, which is your 10th, 11th house about really, you know, what you want to do. You're going to intuit it because the soul is going to be focusing on work now. OK, it's going to really be focusing on work in terms of its leadership abilities, what it's bringing new to the environment. You may completely change a job. You may completely change a profession. You may completely shift. And the ego energy emotionally is very 
Victorian about this. And so this is the spring equinox, the planting season of those values that you have been reevaluating. This is the planting season just before Uranus goes into Taurus. And so if you ride this wave, the next seven years as Uranus is in Taurus will be a very um, prosperous time for you in terms of being able to align with your values in a way that is satisfying for you and for others. Sharing those gifts and talents and that being reciprocated to you. Are you going to be able to control how that's done? No. But with your Cancer Moon energy, you're going to be able to work with the soul energy in the 10th house that is ushering in this Uranus energy in such a way that you will be focused and determined to do so. Because the nakshatra here that's supporting this, Pitura Adrabat, is ruled by Jupiter. And where is your Jupiter? Your Jupiter is in your fourth and fifth houses. And so your Jupiter is supporting your domestic soulful life, your soulful nature in its playful, fun expression of its desires in the world. And so this new moon is telling you that you and Peter Atrabad should have faith in your abilities. You know, maybe you have writing abilities or at this time you're thinking about writing something because it's at this time of the 17th of March that this nakshatra is active. There's a lot of romantic feelings. Again, that intimacy that's being felt at home and maybe in your creative life. Who knows, you're an idealist and you want to write a romantic novel or your intelligence, in in other words, is is being activated in such a way to now tap into areas that before were committed to uh, hiding the shadows. And so since you've had all this energetic support to release those and to heal those, now you have energy to focus on maybe your interest in the occult, which is the unseen forces, the unseen sciences to actually take advantage of the lunar energies that rule your moon sign to intuit even deeper, not just for yourself, but for others. Maybe getting into astrology yourself, maybe becoming a reader, maybe using those intuitive abilities to become an architect, uh, a doctor, or to be a doctor in a new way. Maybe move into another area that's uh, able to utilize your intuitive abilities in a way that's appreciated by the public. You'll have the support to do that energetically. And finally, the last full moon of the quarter is on the 31st. This is in Virgo Libra, your third and fourth houses. The soul is communicating details now to you about how to apply your new beliefs in loving, practical ways. You are um, being given very specific downloads at this particular full moon, which is in Pisces Aries. And as long as you the ego remains emotionally open to keeping the communication that crossroads open with the soul uh, about your challenges, fears that you may be having and concerns. So angels, guides and your ancestors can have an open tarmac to deliver relief to you. Um, Great mother came through with that for some reason. Uh, Those of you who uh, are listening, this is uh, (laughs) relevant somehow to you, um, you will balance the relationship, work, health, and contractual issues that you have because, you know, that sun and Aries is that leadership. And so taking a leadership role and saying, okay, I need to have these type of commitments and relationships that support my emotional well-being at home and at work. Okay, that full moon in that Libra and the sun and Aries. Okay, and the soul energy of that Virgo in the third house saying, hey, specific communication, the soul is being in that state of downloading intuitive information right to you through that Pisces full moon sun, you know, in the Vedic, in the soul, I believe, you know. I believe. And so it's giving you that energy of I believe. So believe, Cancer Moon people, in what you are feeling. 
So the summary of uh, March, the third quarter of 2018 in Sheila Gig is this is a bold card for a bold month for you, isn't it? If it takes longer to manifest the inner and outer balance that you desire, don't worry. More ecliptical support is on its way with three more this year. Okay, so remember, the race is not given to the swift, but to those who endure. And you know how to do that with such love and nurturing. But Great Mother saying, remember to do that for you first. She loves you. And I do too. (laughs) 